on this part of our journey, we leave the Mahe Peninsula and head back to Wairau, around a 40 minute drive, to reunite with other family members. As we travel along the coastline back to Wairau, we can't help but feel the connection to the Ngāti Kahanganu tribe and their belonging to the spectacular landscape. Wairau is very much a river town, the bridge over the Wairau River being the lifeline between the town's two halves. The Maori word Wairau means long river. To find out more about our heritage, we arrive at our tribal meeting house, or Marae as it is known in Maori. Our Marae, the Taiho Marae, is steeped with history and tradition, including memorials to those who had fought and died in the First and Second World Wars. Relatives greet us in the traditional manner, where a small reunion has been arranged. Here, we are immersed in Maori customs and values and gain insight into the role the Marae has played over the generations. We travel in a small group to significant places of tribal importance and our cousin Panay acts as a guide to provide information on the history of the region, our ancestors and our whakapapa, the Maori meaning for genealogy. At the lookout over Wairau, the view offers a panoramic view of the immediate area of our rohi, or tribal land, and the surrounding places of importance where our iwi, or tribe, first settled and called home. Stories of tribal folklore are provided by Panay, who has grown up in Wairau and has studied our family history and the Ngāti Kahanganu tribe. Closer to the current Taiho Marae, we find the remains of the original Marae first built nearly 200 years ago. On the western bank of the river, we visit the cemetery and final resting place of some of our ancestors, including the grave of our great-grandmother, Pango Irahi. Over the years, the elements, including flooding and frequent earthquakes, have taken their toll on this burial place as can be seen by the cracks and subsidence in the gravestones. Back at the Marae, preparation is underway for a feast for all the visiting relatives, a tradition when family members reunite. Tables are set with a variety of local and homegrown produce with fresh local seafood to feast on. After a hearty meal, it's all hands on deck to clean up, do the dishes 
and prepare for the evening's entertainment. Into the evening, we are treated to a PowerPoint presentation by Panay on the history of the Wairau district and the heritage of the Ngāti Kahanganu tribe. Although Wairau was a central location of the Ngāti Kahanganu, they actually had tribal land extending south to the very bottom tip of the North Island near Wellington. The stories of conflict between tribal elders and chieftains of other rival tribes are both fascinating and intriguing. We also have a proud history of members of our families playing for and coaching the legendary All Blacks, New Zealand's international football team. Of course, the women of the time also played a significant part in the history of the Ngāti Kahanganu, with the Princess of a Chieftain marrying a Scotsman named McGregor and creating our direct family connection to the legendary Rob Roy McGregor of Scotland. Rob Roy McGregor was made famous for his fight to prevent the British taking control of Scotland in the 17th century. His story is immortalised in the movie Braveheart, starring Mel Gibson. There's also a rumour that actor-director Ewan McGregor has a production company called Pango Productions. This would arguably show the McGregors of Scotland also recognise their connection with the Ngāti Kahanganu and Pango Erehi of Wairau. The great thing about all this is that the records are being catalogued by different family bloodlines, hopefully to be merged into one complete record of history through the ages, for future generations to reflect upon and to keep alive. <laughs>